Today, I'm going to show you how you can use an open source approach to migrating your applications and updating your code bases, similar to how you would use something like Amazon Q. So Amazon Q is a software as a service from AWS, and you might have some reservations about hooking your code up and sharing it with a model that is hosted and managed by Amazon. Instead, wouldn't it be nice if you could use generative AI with a model and an open source project that you have complete control over? So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. You can perform similar upgrades. So let's say you wanted to upgrade your code bases from, let's say, a Java 17 to Java 21. That's what I'm going to be showing you today. So we're going to be talking about an open source project called Conveyor AI. So Kai for short. As part of this, we will be taking a look at the performance we get from running the process through using an 8 billion parameter model, generative AI model, and then see what the difference in the results that we get is if we use a 70 billion parameter model. And then showing how the underlying OpenShift allows us to easily run those two models and switch between them and get different results. So we'll we'll take a look at that. And so let's get started. So let's take a look at this. We're not going to go into great detail about the architecture, but you'll notice in this blog post, so if you go to Conveyor, there's an umbrella, basically. Uh, so there's a number of projects around migration that are open source and the umbrella is Conveyor. And one of those projects is Kai, so the Conveyor AI. I may in post show a few of these um, architecture diagrams more, more closely, but know that it uses retrieval augmented generation in a unique way. And you'll, you'll be able to see, kind of get a feel for how all of this works as I go through the demo. And so it's taking a look at your code and then you are able to plug in whatever open source model that you want. I'll show you how I do that. And then it it's it's pretty flexible and pretty intelligent that when you have a, a solution that you've already performed, it will remember that and say, oh, this is similar code and you solved it this way in the past. Let's go ahead and solve this the same way now. So it learns and it gets smarter. But even without that, you'll be able to see how this Language server protocol and these rules, you can create your own custom rules, can be used to solve problems like upgrading your version of Java from one version to the other. So let's take a look at what I've done here. So I have a code base that I, that I basically generated using Java 17 and Maven. And it's pretty simple right now, but I went to a website. What, okay, what are the different things that we have to do when we're moving from Java 17 to 21? What are the things that we have to look for? So I wanted, you know, the rules that are associated with Kai, there's a whole bunch of them that are built in and I can go, you know, I, I cloned them. They're all open source. If we can't, can't come and look at this. So there's things for EAP6, EAP7, and, you know, um, you know file mappings, few service works, hibernate, and then open JDK seven through 21. So there's a bunch of rules built in, but then there's also rules that I was able to make that went into more detail about specific things that I wanted to look for based on stuff like this that's in the open source community. So in this case, there was an example of using, so having somebody implement a get first method that implements the list interface. So in Java 17, this would compile, but in Java 21, that would cause a problem because the list interface then introduced inherently a get first method that does not have this signature. So that caused a problem. So for example, let's take a look at this. So I, I have a string list. So I just basically created a class called string list. And then let's go ahead and try to compile this with Java 17. So that'll work fine. So I, if I do a Maven clean and then a Maven install, so this is Java 17 and it compiles just fine. But let's say we switch over to Java 21 now. So I'm gonna come in and change my POM file to use Java 21. So I'm gonna save that. 
I'm going to do a Maven clean and a Maven install. And now we get an error. So we, we don't want to have to go through all of this code when we, let's say we were to just go through and start upgrading our POM files to Java 21. And then read and then try to you know do a maven clean and a maven install we would get a bunch of errors and then we'd have to go in as developers try to manually fix all of that we don't want to do that so um you know under the covers what something like amazon q uses is a static analysis tool like open rewrite and open rewrite then is combined so it does its job of looking at different rules and then it will it will use generative ai to fix whatever was left over after the static analysis runs. Something similar is happening here. We're using the language server protocol rules and we're doing static analysis. And then from that, we can iteratively go and make changes or make suggestions to automatically update the code based on very, you know, much more structured rules that Conveyor AI introduces with its architecture. So it's not just haphazardly using retrieval augmented generation. Instead, it's using a very, you know, very flexible fr framework to get very good results with models that don't have to be very large. So that's what I'm going to show here. Your Visual Studio code, and you want to add Conveyor AI. And then you will be able to see the Conveyor AI in your installed extensions. And if you click this and then go to manage and then settings you'll see a few things in here so you can use the default rules but as i said i wanted to add something that was specific to the you know the things that weren't in the default rules and i think you'll get the best best results out of building up the rules that you know that you know that are going to be in your code base but you only have to then create a rule and um, solve it once and then you can solve it again for all of your code bases. I've got a rule that I created. So you, you essentially have a rule set.yaml file, very simple to create. You give it a name. And then in that same folder, you will have your rule. You give your, you know, so you're going to be using the language server pro, uh, protocol rule format. And you can come in and do things like this. When you have a Java file that has get first in its method name so in this case right if we were to we're talking about an interface that has defined the get first method we're looking for that but then it also is implementing so the location would be implements type the pattern we're looking for is list and then this message is what generative ai will also use to help make the right corrections automatically for you and so let's go ahead and see what we do in order to run this. So let's take a look at the model that's being used. So open the Gen AI model provider configuration file, and you can use any open AI compatible model. And in this case, I'm using a model that is hosted on OpenShift. And you have, you've seen other videos by me of how I, I deploy and run models on OpenShift. So it's a hybrid cloud platform that you can run anywhere based on open, you know, open source upstream projects. In this case, I'm running a Granite 3.1 8 billion parameter model. I could use an uh, open AI and use that API endpoint and get the results, but I don't need one of those large models to get good results. Instead, I'm going to be using a model that I'm hosting here. So if I were to take a look at my instance of OpenShift, and again, you can run this anywhere, I'm running this on my local infrastructure, as you've seen in some of my previous videos, and take a look at Red Hat OpenShift AI. I have a data science project that then if I go to look at my models, I've got a model that is available at this endpoint. So I can copy that, and then I can come back to my provider settings, YAML, plug that in with the, with the forward slash V1, the provider is chat open AI, but again, this isn't going out to the public internet. This is staying within my walls and I'm using this granite three, one, eight billion parameter instruct model. Then when I have that configured, I can hit control shift P again and go to my configure analysis. I can hit start 
And once that server status turns green and says it's running, I can go ahead and run the analysis. And I was able to get these results. And now I can go ahead and say either resolve all or I can do them one at a time. And now the model is going to be being called. So let's take a look. So we can we can actually go into OpenShift and you will see that, you know, the model that we have complete control over is being utilized. So if we come down and look at our observe and go to dashboards and I have NVIDIA. So I've got my different GPUs being, ex, you know, being exercised, or I can also come in and take a look at the metrics here. So if I were to go and look at the last minute or so, you'll see we'll get a spike here and you'll get some metrics about the utilization. So there's not a lot of CPU that's, that's required to run this 8 billion parameter model. And once it's done, we can come back to our IDE and look at the results that it gives us. So we can take, before we go and accept them, I'm not gonna change the RPC server log, so I'm gonna reject those changes, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at these. And then I can see that it's made a few changes. One of them is it now knows that the signature of the model of the method for get first should be returning a string rather than something else. It has to be a string. So it made that change correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept. Now, one of the things that I have noticed, and so I'm gonna show after this, you know, so the 8 billion parameter model does a, does a decent job, but still, a, a, you know, not a super big model, but a much, much bigger model would be, for example, something like Llama 70B or even one of the larger granite models. So I, I'm going to show how to run that as well and then look at the results compared to the results that I have here. So one of the things that I noticed that this did, right, the smaller model, sometimes it will get a little bit overzealous and eliminate the imports that I had and start causing issues here. So I don't like that because then in order to get it to work, I have to come in and say, abstract list, import, you know, fix the imports. Well, that's no fun, right? List. to fix that but otherwise if I come back now and go to my palm switch so I'm I'm on Java 21 let's go ahead and hit maven clean and maven install and now it compiles successfully but it did make some mistakes so I've noticed that the 8 billion parameter model you could probably get an 8 billion parameter model like star coder and get better results that because it's been fine-tuned more closely on, on generating code and understanding code, this is pretty much just a generic, you know, a generic generative AI model, Granite uh, 3.1, 8 billion parameter model. But let's instead now run a different model, a bigger model. We can do that with OpenShift. And we can run any model that we want as long as we have the hardware um, available. And then we'll perform the same action that we did before only this time with a little bit more capable model and see if the results are better because we don't wanna to have to go in and manually make changes. Rather, we want the generative AI to know how, what those changes should be so that there's very little, man, you know, if at all, manual intervention. We have, we have the, so all of these worker nodes have come up and we didn't have to do anything other than apply that YAML and OpenShift figured out how to run that model across all of my eight GPUs. I'm going to go to networking. This is our, the endpoint, and we can take this, and we're going to plug in the address up here, do V1 models, and then this is the name of our model. And if we go back, and plug that in to our provider settings. All right, hit save, analysis view, hit start. Okay, it's running. And now we're going to be communicating with the new model and we're going to 
well, it, well, let's run the analysis again just to be sure. And then we'll, we should get back better results that won't require us to make manual changes. So let's go ahead and see if that's true. Okay, the analysis is complete now. Let us take a look. Let's again reject these changes to the log file. We don't necessarily care about that. But let's view our changes. I like that this time the get first is up at the top and it kept the imports in place. All right, we're going to go ahead and say yes to this. We accept all the changes. Let's go and take a look at our file. Let's save and let's do a Maven clean and a Maven install and see if it compiles. Perfect. Build success. So the larger 70 billion parameter model was better than our 8 billion parameter model. And, you know, maybe you want to and have the hardware to run an, an even larger model and get better, even better results. Or you could potentially try to use a smaller 8 billion parameter model that is specific to understanding code. And but still, you're getting excellent results out of a 70 billion parameter model that hasn't been fine tuned specifically on code because it's taking advantage of conveyor AI's capability around the retrieval augmented generation. Again, we could take a look at what the model did in terms of usage. So that 70 billion parameter model used a little bit more uh, resources. So if we take a look at our, our observability and look at our dashboards, We'll go to NVIDIA, DC, GM. You can see there's quite a bit of a spike in GPU uh, power usage versus our 8 billion parameter model. So you can see that, um, you know, we used a bit more in terms of GPU utiliz utilization, power consumption, and, you know, the, there was a subsequent rise in GPU temperature as well. And that's all running on my local hardware. But you could also run this in the cloud in a managed instance of OpenShift AI as well. And you can see either here or here, I'll include the link that I did for installing OpenShift, a managed instance of OpenShift. That's a pretty quick way to get started. I went through the possibilities. You can see that this, we're actually doing something quite useful. And, um, you know, it's something that a lot of software um, engineers want to take advantage of is to use AI to not have to do that those mundane tasks like update the version you know the, their code bases to new versions of Java that's pretty boring work if you want me to do an actual step-by-step -step tutorial just let me know in the comments below and so I'm I plan on actually you know making these courses that take you from beginning to end starting with installing the infrastructure and so it's the some of the videos that I've created before and putting them into courses. If you would like to see uh, a long form step-by-step -step tutorial on this process, let me know. And that is something that I could potentially do. All right, thank you. Uh, thanks for joining and stay tuned for more.